Okay, let's now revise the chapter of cyber security. That is the laws and regulations relating to cyber security. We all know that the chapter is ideally being divided into three parts. First, we have some content of IT Act that we have to study. The second portion is all about business intelligence. And the third portion is cyber crimes, which is again related to IT Act, but has been given as a separate topic over here. Right. Now, uh, although we have a lot of framework and background to understand about IT Act and also to understand about business intelligence, but since we are just revising this particular chapter and not get into those intricate basics and details, we will straight away come to what is the core content and is required from examination perspective. So if we talk about IT Act, Information Technology Act, we know that it is an act of parliament. It was notified on 17th October 2000 and it's applicable to whole of India. In fact, its applicability extends beyond as well. Now, why this particular act came into picture? We know about electronic transactions. We know about electronic records. We also know about digital signatures, right? Earlier, we did not have electronic records, we did not have electronic transactions and digital signatures, forget it. We just had physical signatures and they were only considered to be authentic and um, uh, conceived. If, if there is a paper on which uh, you have my sign, then that is authentic and that can be treated as evidence, that can be treated as uh, my command, right? But now, after inception of this particular act because we know that the times are changing and we have onset of technology so a lot of things are being digitalized so the signatures also need to be digitalized right but obviously this should not be misused by people and to prevent misuse a lot of laws are required so first thing this act gives legal recognition to the electronic transactions and digital signatures it also facilitates the e-filing of documents especially when we are talking with the government departments it further amends other acts like what ma'am like ipc like indian evidence act and we have a certifying authority under the act mainly that relates to digital signatures so licensing monitoring all of that is also covered over here Fortunately, unfortunately, we don't have to read the entire act. We just have to read a few sections of the act. So we will only compile those relevant sections. Before we actually go on, some part of the cyber crime I'm discussing here itself because here we have incorporated in our charts. Now, what is cyber crime? To be precise, we have crimes in our physical space also, like someone may intrude into our house, that is a cyber crime, trespassing, uh, that is a crime, right, trespassing. Someone has come to my physical place, that means someone has intruded into my physical space. Now, if someone or any criminal activity takes place in the cyberspace. Cyberspace means use by using computer, by using the technology, by using the network, right? If they are intruding into the cyberspace that we have, then that is a criminal activity taking place in cyberspace that is cyber crime. Now, these crimes are recognized because if someone is hurting my emotions physically then that's a crime if someone is kidnapping me physically that's a crime if someone is following me physically passing certain comments physically then that is all a crime then the same thing if happening in the cyberspace should also be considered as a crime if someone is stealing anything that belongs to my house maybe that's some precious jewelry maybe that's some cash or whatever i've kept at my place if stealing that is a crime then what i have stored in my computer that is my data and if someone is trying to steal that data then that should also be a crime just because it's happening in some cyber space we cannot say that no it's not a crime of course it is a crime so we have to recognize such type of cyber crimes and these crimes are recognized not just under it act but also under ipc so under it act we have tampering Section 65, hacking, section 66, obscenity, section 67, unauthorized access, section 70, breach of confidentiality, section 72, false TSC, section 73. Ma'am, do we need to learn the section numbers over here? The answer is yes. 
although we have classified cyber crimes against uh, uh, into three categories against person <coughs> against government and uh, of course against property right but we'll read that later these section numbers from examination perspective are to be learned <coughs> okay now under ipc if someone tries to threaten you by sending an email section 503 defamatory message by email section 499 forgery section 463 bogus website fraud section 420 email spoofing section 463 web jacking 383 email abuse 500 we have learned uh, we have discussed about the terms okay now back to the it act back to the core it act that we have to study electronic records if i have to deliver a document to you when i'm dispatching you know it when i'm giving it to you you know it you know exactly the moment when it's taking place because it's happening in the physical space but when the electronic document is moving into some cyber space and reaching a person what is the time and place because it's all happening in the cyber space right so just for the clarification although we know it but this section is kind of a clarificatory section so we have an originator and we have an addressee i am the originator if i'm sending the document to you you are the addressee if you're receiving the document right we all have our computer resource computer resource means my computer or my network that is within my control and uh, we have a computer resource or network outside my control and then there will be your computer resource right so what will be the time of dispatch when it enters a computer resource outside my control that means it hasn't reached you yet but it has gone out of my control so it is somewhere in the network which is not in my control so that will be the considered as the time of dispatch what will be the time of receipt when it enters your computer resource that means when it enters the designated computer resource when it enters the designated computer resource what will be the place of business place of dispatch and place of receipt right because time and place become important when we want to enforce certain type of contracts okay now under this act we have certifying authorities what are certifying authorities see central governments appoint cca and cca gives license to ca ca means certifying authority certifying authority issues dsc to person like us so we have four people involved central government cca ca and then uh, people like us right so cca that is controller of certifying authority they recognize certifying authority they regulate them give them license to issue dsc and also supervise them adjudication central government appoints an officer who is going to be considered as an adjudicating officer uh, see if we do anything which uh, if we're trying to contravene any of the provisions then he is going to hold inquiry and after considering the factors he decides about our con contravention that whether we have contravened a certain provision or not if you're dissatisfied with his order we can appeal within 45 days to another authority that is cyber appellate tribunal if we are still aggrieved we can further make an appeal to high court within 60 days a lot of times data is being collected by government by other organizations also what type of data our personal sensitive data what is our personal sensitive data you go out to get an aadhar made you have to give your biometrics isn't it personal sensitive data can't it be misused banks have your credit card debit card information right some have your health conditions information so there could be ample of personal sensitive data which is only available to you and which you do not share in the public domain any document or any uh, data which is available in the public domain is not your personal data so which you keep it to yourself but you have to disclose it to government because government has made certain things and you have to tell or you have to give it to certain organizations now you have fulfilled your duty as a citizen to do so but it's government's duty 
it's the organizations who collect your personal duty it's their duty to protect your data data protection hence refers to the set of policies which are being implemented to protect sensitive data and it can be collected only if it is lawful if it is for lawful purpose we people are aware that it's being collected we are given an opportunity to review what data is being collected you ensure its security and you also appoint a designate you also designate a grievance officer that if we have any issue we can contact that person and he will be resolving our problems okay so we have to maintain confidentiality we don't have to disclose it to any third party if we do it penalty under section 72a if we don't um, secure the data that means if security is compromised then damages under section 43a okay fine moving to the next part business intelligence business intelligence what is business intelligence see we have a lot of raw data which uh, cannot be used for decision making that means maybe an organization has made 1 lakh sales what decision you'll make by just getting that data no but if we classify the data if we analyze the data in such manner that we get useful information out of this then that is going to be helpful now business intelligence is a technology driven process is not the manual process but is a technology driven process which actually analyzes your data and converts your raw data into useful information which you can use to make data driven decisions right like if from that 1 lakh sales data we get to know that okay fine 70% of women consumers are interested in our product so we get to know okay fine our product is being liked by women consumers so maybe we should target more over there so marketing department can make a move they can make an informed decision based on data otherwise they would be just uh, um going around by some gut feeling or experience right undoubtedly people take a lot of decisions but then if the decision is data driven it helps a lot it improves your efficiency it increases revenue and it also helps to gain competitive advantage over the rivals now how this business intelligence process works it it is a technology driven process so undoubtedly it has to collect all the data first where will the data be available maybe one data here warehouse for the entire organization or maybe department wise we have different different datas like financial data can be obtained from erp softwares so all the data has to be compiled integrated and then proper sets have to be prepared so data preparation is ideally the first step i can say this these are the four steps that we have to focus on data preparation and sets then analytical querying on that data distribution of kpis key uh, performance indicators and then use of information we have to distribute kpis in such a manner that we can actually uh, uh, decide that okay fine when we are talking about uh, maybe average response time to a customer we are able to compare our actual data to our standard ones right so accordingly the kpis have to be distributed and then use of information to take that decision so these are the four steps involved in the process how business intelligence works we have ample of bi softwares or bi platforms which are available ad hoc analysis that is the first one which deals with the issues on temporary basis then we have olap olap is for more complex queries online analytical processing which actually uses multi dimensional database from here from here from here you are picking up information and you are able to combine drill down and do a lot of things right we have discussed everything in detail um, it's just i am only pinpointing something that you need for your examination perspective mobile bi something that's available in your smartphones tablets then we have real time bi which gives you up to date view not something which is historical operational intelligence only um, relates to your operations then you have uh, open source bi open source bi in which you have two uh, refined versions one is free one is paid embedded bi the most important one 
it actually incorporates the features of business intelligence in your homegrown business application. So you have an app in that only they'll provide you these features. Collaborative BI, which you can share with others, right? Location intelligence, it all uh, talks about the location and geospatial data, data, right? So we have different, different types of um, softwares and on that only the modern BI platforms are the tools that we have, data visualization, uh, tools for building dashboards, storytelling features, usage monitoring, Right, I have shown you that picture also. Um, I gave you an example of what Qlik, right, and Tableau, right. So we have a different, we have a lot of tools which are available. See, some tools are absolutely free. As I told you before, also, if we wanted to edit a photograph back in the old times, it was not possible for a normal person to do so only the experts could do so but now we can also do so why because we have photo editing softwares which are free and user friendly we're just putting the softwares adding filters to our photos right so we can do that likewise this was possible only by the analyst it analyst back then but now thanks to these bi platforms and tools which are available and in which we do not require any coding anything like that we just feed the information and it analyzes the data and brings us useful information so we can use it, right? Next is cyber crime. Cyber crime, although I have already explained you what cyber crime is all uh, about, if we talk one by one, cyber crime against person, the first one, cyber stalking. So if you are trying to create some physical threat by stalking people in the cyberspace, like going to their um, maybe mail, phone, text, uh, webcam, whatever it be, that's cyber stalking. Obscenity, indecent exposure to something which should not happen. It includes child pornography. Defamation, trying to lower the dignity of someone. Cracking is... Um, uh, exactly um, hacking also I would say or let me first discuss hacking only because hacking is getting that unauthorized control or access and cracking is someone is breaking into your computer and is tampering with your uh, confidential information spoofing distancing the origin like pretending that it is being sent by someone else. Email spoofing is what? A spoofed email is what? It misrepresents the origin. That means you do not know, uh, you think that this person has sent it, but it's using a different path or a different uh, thing. Carding is all about the frauds related to ATM card, credit card. Fraud is a generic term and threat. Threat is maybe giving threatening messages via mail or uh, anything like that. That is all threatening. If I talk about against property, we have broadly five things. Squatting. Squatting, fighting over a same common domain name, maybe. Um, then vandalism is trying to intentionally destroy the property of other. What could be the property? Here we are talking about the computer. We are talking about the computer resources. We are talking about the data which is in there. Hacking. Now, hacking is against a person also because you get into someone's private space but then after getting into someone's private space if you're destroying that that is a uh, crime against property also virus again virus does the same thing gets into your system and destroys everything trespass unauthorized entry then we have against government which is considered to be the most important from examination perspective cyber terrorism very 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 important issue uh, there could be hate websites, there could be hate mails which are being circulated and it should be uh, prevented. Warfare is again related to hacking. But hacking and then spying with a political motive, that means you're trying to steal that confidential information or you're just trying to uh, like uh, spy, just like CCTV does, right? So hacking and getting into someone's cyberspace and then spying. Piracy, duplicacy, right? And uh, duplicacy of government records, maybe like uh, you have a government license, issuing license, or maybe counterfeit currency notes, etc., etc. Unauthorized information, it could be political, it could be religious, it could be any information 
that government want does not want to disclose to public but you are getting access to that by getting into someone's cyberspace right so that is um, different types of cyber crime